Okay. Hi all, welcome to the Google Summer of Code Office Hours. Uh, we reconvene after one month's break and today is May 6. Uh, we have some good news for you. Uh, all uh, Google Summer of Code projects have been uh, recently announced. So we have uh, seven projects uh, this year. Six projects will be targeting the Jenkins organization. Uh, one will be targeting Jenkins sites. And we have participants from uh, both organizations uh, on this call today. And uh, today I would like to thank uh, all participants uh, who, including students who applied to JSOC, uh, potential mentors who were reviewing applications, ask, answering questions, and uh, all other contributors who helped uh, with initial feedback to students. It's much appreciated. And regardless of the acceptance decision, we appreciate all the effort uh, which has been spent. Uh, yeah, we have seven projects accepted, but I think we could share some statistics. So we had uh, several dozens of applications. Uh, we had around 20 projects uh, in our shortlist. So these are uh, the projects which we considered as feasible, as ones we could potentially accept. Um, and uh, yeah, finally, we were able to accept uh, only seven projects. So, but it doesn't really say that other uh, applications uh, were bad. Uh, we really appreciate all the efforts and we invite all the uh, uh, contributors uh, to keep participating in the Jenkins community, maybe trying again uh, in um, uh, Google Summer of Code next year. Or you can also consider other outreach programs we are organizing. So if you go to advocacy and outreach page, here you can see that uh, there is outreach programs. And if uh, you want to have uh, GSOC-like experience, we participate in outreach. We, uh, we ran our first community bridge project uh, this year. And uh, if you are looking for a mentor, uh, you can just reach out uh, to us um, and uh, we will see what we could do. Uh, so um, it's something we would be happy to do. Uh, and if you want any feedback, just reach out to our admins. We have already had several students reaching out to us, and it's perfectly fine because we are happy to share feedback. We have a lot of internal data, but once you reach out to us, we will process that and send it back. Okay, let's go back to the separate projects. So. Yeah, welcome Sladen, Sumit, Rishab, uh, Keji, Sihon, uh, Logi, and Budika. Uh, yeah, if I mess up names, uh, please uh, feel free to correct me. <laughs> but yeah, we will do our best uh, to get it fixed. And yeah, welcome to the Jenkins community. Also, welcome to many newcomer mentors. Uh, we have uh, around six or seven mentors who have not participated in activities like JSOC before. So yeah, it's a good number of uh, newcomer contributors. And that's why we plan to have these uh, office house meetings uh, during the entire JSOC time. So you are welcome to join them. You are welcome to ask any questions. If you want to ask a question, uh, then you just uh, go to this Google Doc. Uh, we have uh, a link. Well, I will share that in the Gitter chat. Uh, and uh, just put uh, something in the <coughs> of, uh, of the agenda for the next meeting or for the current meeting. And if you want to ask any questions in the runtime, there are multiple channels. So, for example, we have uh, GitHub uh, Google Summer of Code channel. So, I guess the most of uh, students have already seen that because it's linked from our pages. But you can still go there and well, basically ask whatever. Uh, if you have private questions, you can reach out uh, to GSOC Org admins. We have email uh, email for that. So here, if you can go uh, Jenkins JSOC 2020 Org admins and Google Groups. So all private escalations, you can uh, use these emails if you have any concerns. And for public discussions, yes, uh, chat, also public mailing list. Uh, we invite everybody to join it. Uh, we will be sharing some announcements um, about uh, the next phases in this mailing list. And again, you can ask the questions asynchronously if it's your preference. So I guess that's it. For the next phase, um, 
uh, the current phase is called community bonding, and the objective of this phase is to actually get introduced to the community. We uh, hopefully everybody has already received emails um, with uh, congratulations uh, from mentors with uh, next steps. Uh, I hope that all teams uh, will schedule uh, the first meeting soon. And at this meeting, we invite you to discuss uh, how you would collaborate in your project communication channels, the meetings, cadence of these meetings, um, and also um, uh, coordinate uh, the future steps. So the main uh, um, idea for community bonding is to be ready to start coding. It's community bonding, uh, meeting stakeholders, also polishing uh, and continuing the design of your projects. So uh, there are applications which have been submitted um, by you during the Google raw code application phase. They got some feedback, but uh, during the next month, you have an opportunity to improve these uh, applications, uh, get them socialized with the wider community, get more feedback, because instead of around 100 students, now we have uh, seven applications, so we can uh, have more focus. Each uh, project also has mentor teams. So for example, let me just take a look at this one. So here you can see that uh, uh, there are communication channels. We ask all uh, uh, projects to update them gradually. So now it points to platform seek, for example, in the thing, in terms of chat, mailing list, it's JSOC one. Uh, you can change these channels. Again, community bonding is something uh, where uh, project teams decide what they do. Uh, so uh, whatever is comfortable for you, please uh, set up in that way. And uh, then you can uh, discuss together what would be your deliverables, what would be, uh, be plans for phases, because uh, projects uh, can change. Uh, so what you submitted in your application is a general guidelines and you together with mentors can uh, make uh, adjustments uh, well, basically as much as uh, you need. Uh, though we uh, prefer that the projects uh, stay more or less on track in terms of original application, but uh, deliverables uh, are plans that they may uh, change uh, during this phase and even during the coding because it's life and uh, everything may ch change. So uh, you are just expected to contribute, uh, to get experience and uh, uh, to deliver something together with your mentors. This something is so widely a subject for the decision. So we are not committed to the original plan. What else do you need to um, uh, set up during this phase? You need to talk with your mentors about uh, knowledge transfers because many projects uh, require deep dive into Jenkins architecture or Jenkins X architecture. And again, community bonding is a good opportunity to um, discuss uh, these changes uh, to get enough trainings. And, and uh, uh, there are mentors who can help you. Uh, there are also org admins, there is wider community. And if you see that uh, you need additional information to be effective during uh, coding phase. It's uh, uh, community bonding when uh, you can do that. So just uh, uh, discuss it at the project meetings uh, and if needed, uh, raise a question in the mailing list. Uh, we can organize common meetings, for example, how to develop a Jenkins plugin. Uh, we didn't schedule um, a special training for that uh, this year because uh, there is a lot of recorded trainings which you can uh, find on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, you can find uh, the links later together. But if you want to have something specific, just uh, let us know. We can do that. So communication channels, regular meetings, trainings, uh, project plan. And yeah, basically this is what community bonding. Uh, we also welcome you to share your stories. For example, some of you already created prototypes during the application phase. Uh, if you feel that these prototypes uh, is a good story to share with the community, you can already uh, create a blog post, you can uh, write a message to the developer mailing list to share this proof of concept and again to start getting feedback. Uh, Jenkins project uh, has hundreds of contributors, well, actually thousands, um, if you take uh, last year's statistics. So by sharing information in the developer mailing list and other channels, you can uh, get a lot of feedback and uh, it will help you to tune your proposals and to uh, basically uh, deliver your projects. So 
Mm, that's all about community bonding. Uh, we also had some additional communications with mentors. And uh, if uh, there is um, there are any questions, if you need any clarification, it's a good opportunity to ask it now. Because yeah, this uh, that's why we have this office hours. So does anybody have any questions? So Oleg, is there a place where we're expected to report that we've completed as mentors the 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 items or it just hey do it and that's okay uh, well it's not uh, just do that uh, so we actually had a discussion about that uh, 30 minutes ago at the org admin meeting uh, we will be communicating uh, well, just another spreadsheet for that uh, but yeah the list of items we expect mentors to do is firstly documented in the emails we send and uh, this list is actually not something secret. You can uh, go to the projects page and uh, we have uh, mentor guidelines right here. So information from mentors, for mentors. And here the, you can find expectations uh, per phases. And let's take a look. So yeah, we have community bonded. Yeah, it looks to be in the bottom of the list, but yeah, it's just at the beginning actually. So here you can see what we expect to happen. Uh, and uh, you uh, as mentors can uh, use uh, this documentation as a uh, guidance uh, for what we expect. There are also awesome uh, guidelines created by uh, Google. So in addition to these guidelines, you can uh, uh, find a GSOC mentor guide here, and you can find a lot of information uh, uh, for about mentoring, about best practices, and Google actually sends a lot of emails uh they created a greater knowledge base because it's 16 years of gsoc so many questions will be answered uh, in emails sent by google by google but you can also find uh, them here so uh, same for students there is a student guide uh, on gsoc page there is also a student guide on the jenkins page um, so you may have seen this guideline uh, because it was referenced from the application Place, and here you can find the community bonding. So basically, this is what I presented today. So communication channels, weekly meetings, introduce uh, to contributors, discuss your projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can use these documents as a, uh, basically um, as a list of what you expected to do. Um, yeah, this uh, list uh, may be incomplete. If you see any issues today, if you want to share your feedback, uh, you're welcome to do that uh, just uh, in the Gitter channel. If you just see a type, I want uh, to make a suggestion. It's open source, so you click improve this page button, and actually you can suggest a page in this document. So that's it. And once you suggest the page, uh, JSOC org admins will be requested to review it automatically. So yeah. It's quite easy to do that, so please feel free to do it in this way or just discuss it in the office house. Okay. In terms of mm -hmm. um, actually reporting the status, where my task is to create a spreadsheet where I'm gonna track the different items that is expect that we're expecting every JSOC team. Um, to, to, to be completing. So we don't have it yet. Uh, it's something I've prepared last year and I, I'm gonna do it this year as well. Mm -hmm. If you have ideas on the format this should take, by all means, uh, share it with me. I'm happy to take suggestions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any other questions from students, from mentors about the expectations? Yeah, um, yep. uh, yeah with respect uh, to the uh, projects, will there be a separate Gator channel for every project created? Is that supposed to be? Um, and, uh, this is a good news. It's totally up to the mentoring teams and to okay. project teams. Uh, so, we have, um, uh, last year we had a majority of projects choosing uh, to have their own channels. The main reason for that is obviously traffic because 
what we see. Uh, our general recommendation is to use mailing lists as much as possible. But the reality is that uh, many communications actually happen in uh, chats and you can uh, define a chat uh, for yourself. So you can create a Gitter chat. If you want, you can have a Slack chat. For example, it uh, might be much more reasonable for Jenkins X projects. You can even have IRC chat if you prefer. Uh, so, and if you need something specific, we as of admins will uh, be happy to help you today. But communication channels is up to project teams. We do not enforce anything specific uh, as of admins. We just ask you to have these communication channels, to have them public so that any contributor can join and uh, to um, have uh, regular sync ups and meetings uh, starting from community bonnet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would like to add, Oleg, that mm -hmm. on the pages that you are showing for the different projects, there's a section where there's a, a connect um, mm -hmm. It's actually on this page as well, but specific project pages have that. So make sure that your links there for your specific projects are the real ones for your project. So the mailing list, the chat on Gitter, if you use another chat system, please provide the link, send a pull request with your link there. So if you need information how to do that, uh, yeah, I can just use this project as an example. Uh, all projects, again, uh, they implemented in documentation as code, and we ask students and mentors to gradually improve these pages to put information, uh, thanks to students who have already submitted pull requests. And here you can actually see some metadata. So for example, uh, student, mentors, etc. well, there is no rocket science here. It's just a YAML file. Same for channels. So for example, here we have Gitter. We don't have a mailing list uh, link because it defaults to the platform seed. We have some inheritance magic. Same for meetings. So once you have uh, meetings set up and uh, uh, mailing list, if you decide to have one, uh, you can just update this metadata and uh, they, it will point to the right location. What if someone wants to add an IRC channel in the links? How does that work? Uh, I don't have an example for IRC. I can show an example for Slack because uh, this is what we, uh, we have for Jenkins X. So for example, apps consolidation project. Yeah, I'm navigating into the configuration as code, but here you can see that basically uh, chat is just hyperlink. So if you go to the this page, then uh, you will see that it just shows a hyperlink to whatever location. Well, it's not a whatever location, it's a website of Jenkins X, which uh, has a listing of uh, Slack channels. Uh, right, yeah, so chat. Yes. Uh, Slack is our main form of communication. We're also setting up mm -hmm. a mailing list, a public mailing list for Google Summer of Code, and I'll update that mm -hmm. on the page. Yeah, I guess uh, there will be need uh, in a separate channel for JSOC because yeah, the problem is generic ch channels so that uh, they have a lot of traffic. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. so let's see uh, how it's implemented. Same for RC, you can just add a hyperlink. Mm -hmm. Though for RC, one thing you need to keep in mind that uh, you may have difficulties with uh, storing conversation histories. Right now, we don't have service on the Jenkins side, which will store conversation histories. We are using external service for that, but this external service might be a bit complicated to set up for JSOC project. So if you choose to use RC, make, think, uh, make sure to think about uh, how you uh, sort con conversation archives. It may be important for you as the project team in uh, some edge uh, and hopefully in some edge cases, which we will hopefully avoid. Uh, it may be needed uh, for orphan admins and for Google. For example, if a project gets failed due to whatever reason, if there is an escalation, if there is a dispute, then orphan admins and um, um, uh, Google get involved. And for us, it would be really important to have access to conversations uh, just uh, to make uh, decisions because uh, yeah, uh, things happen. 
Uh, it's not that often in Google Summer of Code, but uh, I think still keeping in mind that uh, the conversations should be as public as possible and they should be accessible. Okay. Anything else about, about charts? Okay, looks like not. Any other questions before we proceed with these ones? Okay, let's do questions from Mark and if you have anything uh, um, in uh, uh, else, just put that in the list. So timeline deviations. In a Google Summer of Code, we have um, so basically a public timeline which has uh, fixed uh, uh, dates. So for example, here you can see dates for uh, community bonding uh, and then for coding phases. So these dates are fixed. What it means is that community bonding happens during this interval. Uh, same for coding phases. So for example, uh, yeah, there will be evaluation period and by July 3rd, uh, every project team is expected to submit evaluations. Um, well, basically it's pass or fail. And same for the next phases. So these days are must have, these days cannot be moved. Um, evaluation process is something we will discuss in uh, follow-ups. So there are also guidelines for that. Uh, but uh, there is uh, some flexibility. And that's why you have community bonding because mentor teams, students uh, discuss uh, the availability. We ask uh, to all students to submit information in the application for a reason. We also ask to all mentors to submit that in the mentor uh, confirmation form. And now we ask project teams to actually work together and to see how the schedule would be adjusted. For example, it's common to have uh, exams uh, or, uh, for example, uh, 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 job placement and other things in July. Uh, if you talk about India, in, in Russia, it's common to have exams in June and so on and so on. It's normal. It's something we want to take into account. Uh, moreover, we expect you to take vacations uh, during the JSOC. Uh, well, it's not something like you work eight hours every day. There are still weekends. Uh, you can uh, take breaks if needed. Uh, but uh, yeah, every, evaluation stays the same. So what do deviations mean that you as project team can discuss your project plan? For example, if you see that if due to whatever reason uh, you won't be available to do work uh, in the middle of coding, let's say in July, uh, if it's a, a long period, two weeks, three weeks, or maybe the entire coding phase, you can discuss with students how you adjust. So for example, you could start coding early in mid -mar in mid-May, so that the scope still could be delivered. Yes, the evaluations will be happening uh, somehow, basically based on your agreements with mentors, and it's totally fine. Uh, what cannot be adjusted is the end day. So it means that our projects are expected to complete by this day. Uh, again, definition of done for the projects is totally up to the team. And the approach of G so called means that as long as mentors are fine, we are fine. Um, so basically, you are not uh, committed to deliver all the things in your plan, uh, but the evaluation that will happen on this day. So it's not okay to postpone things after this day. Uh, doing things before, doing the things in advance is perfectly fine. Um, uh, there are cases in uh, Google Summer of Code when uh, all the project scope was completed uh, in uh, June. It's also normal. You can still discuss what you do during the next phases, uh, or you just decide to be a bit more relaxed. So let's see how it goes. But you can discuss it uh, with the mentor team, and you just need to, uh, to keep in mind that these days are fixed. Okay, questions? Thank you. That, that the crucial thing then was end date is not variable, but we could start early if we needed to. I like exactly. that. Thanks. Uh, and yeah, within phases, you can also adjust. Okay. Oleg, would you like to talk about the scope of projects or the definition of projects, which is 
mm. also flexible as long as it's agreed to between uh, mentors and students. Uh, okay, uh, let's discuss that. I briefly talked about that. So, Sladen, would you be fine if I use your project page as an example? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So Sladen uh, already submitted a pull request uh, which uh, contains the information. So we can just uh, take an example. Okay, uh, so custom Jenkins distribution build service. So here you can see that uh, there is a number of key de deliverables. Actually, this is what was submitted in the application and there is a plan for phases. So as we discussed before, this plan is up for discussion. So it's just initial thing. Uh, moreover, this plan can change even after uh, the, the community bonding. For example, uh, let's take a look. We have uh, a phase three. So one feedback I submitted in this pull request is about uh, yeah, the integration of a database into the service so that uh, users could store private configurations on the custom build service. So for example, I as a pattern, well, I'm not a mentor in this project, I'm a stakeholder but I can uh, go join uh, channels and say that, okay, I don't think that it's something you could do, should do. Instead of that, I suggest uh, to use configuration as code, so to store everything in GitHub uh, instead of database. And if you want to have a private service, let's uh, add support of uh, self-hosted uh, packaging services instead. So that it's not hosted on uh, um, Jenkins IO uh, or host, hosted by elsewhere, but we provide all the documentation like Helm chart or whatever to deploy that. Uh, is it a reasonable feedback? It's definitely a subject for discussion. Uh, and uh, we, during community bonding, we can discuss that. We can adjust the plan and then uh, we could decide uh, together between mentors and stakeholders what we actually do with that. And, uh, the uh, same for all other things. So this plan is uh, basically a subject for discussion, not only the plan for phases, but deliverables we would do. As long as um, uh, the project is delivered uh, in principle, so there is a goal. The goal is actually provide uh, users a way to package custom uh, Jenkins distributions. This is the goal. And in uh, practice, at your job, in open source community, uh, way to this goal may significantly change. So you are perfectly fine to change your plan, change deliverables, and uh, we encourage to do that. If uh, you see that the deliverables don't really make sense or they could be deprioritized instead of um, other things you would consider as a feedback. So you're welcome to adjust as you wish. Does it make sense? Okay, so one thing about who leads this change. Uh, in Google Summer of Code, students lead this change. What it means that uh, students are basically champions in their projects and they make final decision of what uh, would be done and uh, how they would be done. So mentors act as advisors. Uh, obviously, mentors have an opportunity to fail the project if something goes really wrong. Uh, but in principle, it's uh, students who drive the decisions. Uh, if uh, students have strong opinions, it's something you should share. It's something uh, you feel free to protect your opinions, feel free to protect your approach. And we had cases uh, when the projects have been changed significantly because students have seen another direction. So for example, when we were working on configuration, uh, sorry, on coverage uh, plugin, the student working there basically implemented the most of the scope uh, uh, in June, and then the rest uh, was basically driven by the student, and it was an awesome project. And uh, the same for other things. So just uh, make sure that uh, uh, the project is interesting to you and that uh, you drive the change there. Okay, does it make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, so yes, uh, JSOC student is a boss and uh, still if you have some difficulties, if you need help from mentors, if you need assistance with decision making, that's why we have mentors around. 
So don't hesitate to reach out to, to, uh, to get questions. Uh, don't hesitate to request feedback if you don't get one. Uh, if there are issues, yeah, there are installation channels, for example, Doge SOC or admins. But uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, handle that uh, with uh, uh, mentoring teams because uh, this year mentoring teams are really strong due to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, we set a requirement that uh, each project has at least three mentors. Uh, in one case, we have six mentors. Uh, at least uh, in the <laughs> in the beginning of the project, uh, all these mentor teams may change. As a part of community bonding, you can uh, get uh, more mentors who decide to join after the initial discussions. Some mentors may leave the project. Life happens. Yeah, now basically nothing can be predicted. Nobody knows what happens tomorrow. So uh, please uh, be kind and please be ready to such situations. But yeah, our main goal is to actually work together and uh, uh, to, to get a lot of experiences and uh, to have something delivered. That's it. Okay. Any comments, questions? Okay, so timeline deviations hopefully done. Yeah, we uh, did some detours, but yeah, it's done. So the next is public meetings and expectations. Again, it's documented somewhere in guidelines. We expect all teams to have at least one weekly meeting. Our recommendation is to actually have two meetings uh, at these meetings, uh, again, you're welcome to work as you prefer. What are the best practices? Is to have a uh, public uh, meeting notes document. So you see this Google Doc, and actually this is approach we use in pretty much every special interest group or sub-project in Jenkins. So this uh, Google Doc is publicly visible. Uh, yeah, there is a new interface. I'm still getting used to that, uh, but yeah. I, Actually, anyone uh, can uh, see that. We also link it from pages. Uh, when you work on your project pages, we advise to have a meetings section here where you uh, provide a link to your doc, uh, describe the cadence. So instead of this link, actually you have something on the page directly. And uh, then, uh, you know, uh, then this information becomes accessible to everyone. So keep track of this document. Um, well, basically you can use it for weekly updates. So in the beginning, have a short summary of what you've done over the week, then have a discussion about obstacles, about where the help is needed, so that you can could coordinate it with mentors. And yeah, this is the main idea for the meeting. Uh, whether you want to record these meetings, it's up to you. We do not set a requirement uh, to record these meetings. But if you want, you can totally do that. And for example, if you agree that at this meeting uh, you would do a demo, uh, for example, uh, it's a middle of evaluation phase, you have something to show, uh, it's really advised to, re advised to record that so that you can share it with wider community. And uh, we, if you need a recording, we have two ways to do that. So one way is to use Zoom. So right now we are using uh, Jenkins Zoom account. And we will be work, working to get uh, give access uh, to this account to more contributors. So if you want, just pin work means, and we will make sure that uh, you have this recorded session. Other ways is to basically use any other Zoom account, or you can uh, use other services. For example, there is a great open source project, GC. There are other projects. Uh, yeah, so I can show it. Yeah, GC. Uh, Okay, just see me, I guess. Uh, okay. I guess it. Okay. I die not wire. Okay. So Google helps. Uh, but yeah, cool thing that uh, this is an open source project. Another cool thing that uh, they use Jenkins for CI and CD. Uh, but yeah, this is a project which you. Uh, this is uh, a tool you can install, you can have a recorded meeting, and then uh, you can just upload uh, this meeting uh, anywhere. And if you want, we will get it hosted on uh, our YouTube channel. Jenkins has its own YouTube channel where we post, we are posting these videos, for example. Uh, if you want, I can actually show it to you. Uh, yeah. 
So let's uh, take, so here, for example, uh, meetings are recorded uh, and posted here. And here you can see, I guess, recordings of our pre previous meetings. And I still need to figure out what's uh, wrong with ordering there, but yeah, you can find the historical meetings. And if you want uh, to get your demo, etc., posted, we can uh, get it here, or we can use special interest group channels. We haven't talked about special interest groups yet, but yeah, every project has one, and you can use it as a wider community, so just feel free to also communicate with members and uh, uh, present uh, your projects there. Okay, does it have to be once a week uh, or is, uh, if your project team uh, decides? So, uh, we highly recommend uh, to have such meeting uh, once a week uh, because it's really needed for sync up. It doesn't have to be a video call. If you decide to do it in chat, okay, you can do it in chat. Um, but uh, the meeting itself is important. Uh, if you want to have daily meetings, yeah, please feel free to do that. I'm not sure that mentors would be really happy about that, but uh, yeah, it's totally up to the team to decide. Um, so just uh, organize them as you wish, and the time uh, zones, etc., is also up to you. So we usually use service called Doodle.com uh, in order to vote for meetings. And for example, this meeting office hours, I will also submit a doodle in order to find a better time because now we have uh, contributors uh, who work in different time zones. So maybe we should reconsider this meeting time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, teams decide. I would like to say something regarding that, Oleg, please. So, if you, if as a student or a mentor, you are blocked by something, um, if, if as a student you expect some activity to happen and it's not happening or same for mentors, then do not wait for the next weekly meeting to, to seek assistance from org admins. Please report anything that is, mm, that you expect to happen and it's not happening. Don't wait one week. Let us know within a day or two. Same if you're have a if you're blocked during coding and you cannot progress. Do not wait for your weekly meeting. Just ping your mentors. Let them know you're blocked. It's perfectly fine. We don't expect you to know everything. So it's mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine to ping your mentors quickly when you're blocked. When you're stopped on something. I assume Martin also if someone feels there's been a code of conduct violation those are again places where talking to the org admin sooner is better talking to your mentors sooner is better. Yes Mark thank you. Yeah definitely so for code of conduct again hopefully we won't need that uh, but yeah there is official code of conduct uh, published on the Jenkins website yeah, it's a bit long, but uh, it boils down uh, to be nice. Uh, and uh, if something doesn't work, uh, yeah, you can escalate it uh, through official channels like Jenkins board. Obviously, if it's something uh, not that serious, it's better to start from org means or maybe just uh, discussing it in private messages. Because, yeah, things happen. There are different cultures. Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, uh, if you feel uncomfortable, just uh, let uh, people know. Usually it's just misunderstanding and we hope that uh, there is no better intentions. But yeah, if something goes really wrong, there is a channel for that. Okay. So any questions, comments? Uh, Yeah, I think in the future we should expect other people to have more questions than Mark. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, one question uh, we often receive uh, is about office hours. So, 
yeah, we expect uh, uh, students and mentors to participate in their project meetings. We do not expect you to participate in, in office hours unless you have questions or unless you want to hang out, etc. Uh, just uh, chat with people, maybe sh share some experiences. So this meeting is totally optional. Uh, the main purpose for this meeting will be to firstly uh, have QA regarding the process side. Again, technical side is better to discuss in the developer mailing list uh, or in your project channels. Uh, but for organization, yeah, you can use these meetings. Um, we, can, uh, uh, we do not want to have these meetings for one hour every week. Uh, so basically, we will be closing these meetings earlier once there is no questions on all topics to discuss. Um, we will be still recording this meeting and uh, doing meeting notes. So if you just want to see what happened there post-factum, just go to this Google Doc or to the YouTube channel we shared and you will be able uh, to see this information. Uh, so this meeting is totally optional. And we yeah, understand that uh, this time zone it will be a challenging for everyone uh, to participate. Uh, yes, Martin? Oleg. <laughs> So um, in the past, we've had knowledge transfer sessions and those were special meetings. I suggest that if the office hours are available for knowledge transfer uh, and if, if the timeline works with, with the people that need them, we could use office hours for you know, 25, 30, 40 minutes long knowledge transfer sessions for things yep. that are common to, to to multiple people. Mm -hmm. I agree. Why not? And yeah, there are. I already started uh, speaking about special interest groups. So if you go to the website, you can see that uh, there is a number of sub projects. There is a number of special interest groups, and uh, many projects uh, are somehow linked to them. For example, there is platform special interest group. Uh, or platform support where we have custom uh, Jenkins uh, distribution build service uh, and other projects. Uh, also, there is Cloud Native SQL where we have external storage and so on and so on. So feel free to use these channels as an additional communication channels. Uh, all of them have uh, regular or less regular meetings. So for example, if you go to pipeline altering, uh, here you can see that basically meetings uh, happen weekly. Uh, commonly it's monthly or every two weeks, but you can join these meetings, you can uh, meet other contributors, you can, uh, for example, present a demo before going uh, to the online meetup, etc. And uh, yeah, it can, uh, can be additional source of feedback for you. So if you want to have knowledge transfers, etc., you can also use these existing channels. I mentioned online meetup a few times. Uh, would you like to briefly discuss that? Okay, I'll just show it. So in Jenkins project, we also have uh, a Jenkins online meetup. So basically it's used for public meetings. Uh, we use meetup.com and today we announce various meetups for users, for developers. And we historically make final uh, evaluation presentations and the online meetup. So it means so that uh, by the end of the third coding phase, we expect every student to present at their online meetup uh, to show their project. Usually it's a kind of live demos with some overviews, with some discussions. So it's uh, going to be happening at least for final evaluations. We are not sure about the intermediate coding phases. Uh, we expect you to have a recorded demo, uh, for example, as a part of your project meeting, as a part of SIG meeting. Maybe we will do internal meetings. Let's see. But if you have something you would like to share, uh, we basically encourage you to continuously integrate uh, your changes into the master branches. So when you work on the project, we don't expect uh, your project to stay in the uh, uh, branch for three months and then uh, to get magically merged. We ex actually expect quite opposite because well, Jenkins is used for continuous integration as well. Uh, so as long uh, once uh, your particular deliverable feature is ready, it's integrated, etc. If you see see its value in that, if you would like to present it, 
or even if you want to present something in work in progress, you can uh, ask us. Uh, we could organize Jenkins online meetup so that uh, we have this discussion. Um, uh, and you can also write a blog post. So for example, if you take a blog, uh, for example, there is a blog post by team uh, about GitHub app authentication support. Uh, so this was a blog post about preview version. Uh, well, I, I will submit an update later because it's already GE. But if you want uh, to share some information, um, uh, please do that. And uh, our general expectation that uh, during every coding phase, uh, there is one blog post uh, by the student. So it's just a summary of the project, maybe some screenshots, some highlights. It doesn't have to be something uh, all, uh, very long. Uh, but uh, don't wait uh, till the end of the phase. If you have something to share, if you already have something to share now, why, uh, maybe uh, for a prototype, you can just uh, do it now. So sharing information is uh, the best way to get feedback and uh, all uh, Jenkins channels are IoT service for this purpose. Okay. Yeah, so we are slightly going over time. So this meeting targets 45 minutes, but if there are any other questions, let's discuss them. If not, we can uh, take them offline. Okay, anyone? Have we, have we answered all the questions that um, people have in mind? Well, likely not, but if you have something to ask, uh, you have uh, many at least the Gitter channels, uh, et cetera. Um, yeah, uh, thanks again to everyone for participating in Google Summer of Code. It's an honor to work with you and yeah, hopefully we will have a number of uh, great projects uh, this year. So uh, thanks to everyone. Um, uh, have great meetings and have great onboarding to the Jenkins organization or to Jenkins X organization. But yeah, welcome to everyone. Thank you. Bye.